Greetings guys, the woman that needs no introduction here. Everything and anything you need to know about me and my ministry is at royalproclamations.com. Royalproclamations.com and there are links in every one of our videos to the various arms of our ministry. So I have a word for Kenya, the nation Kenya. Before I get into the message, I'd like to crave your indulgence for about, to allow me for about a couple of minutes to provide context, excuse me, to the message so that you would have a greater understanding. I'm not here to sensationalize messages, my messages. I'm not here for sensationalism. I'm here as a sent one to educate the body of Christ, to enlighten them and bring them back um, biblically, you know, and align them biblically with the word of God. And so let me dive quickly into it. <sighs> In my um, deception, Israel deception exposed with biblical proofs video, which I'll link in the description section. I concluded that ancient Israel was located in Africa and that the current Middle East is actually middle of Africa. I also concluded that the ancient Hebrews were blacks, okay? But watch the video for more details. And so that lets us know that Africa, the land, is very prophetic, especially East Africa, East Gate, in the Garden of Eden, um, in Genesis 1, talking about Garden of Eden, we talk about the East. It talks about Ethiopia, right? And the East Gate and the East Wind and so on and so forth. I've done a teaching on that before. So not just is Africa as a as a, a people and a, as, a, as the land, prophetic and symbolic. East Africa in particular is, and especially within East Africa, Kenya. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, Kenya is a very prophetic landmark, spiritual landmark and portal. Hashtag, prophetic spiritual landmark and portal. You know, conversations for other days. But, you know, there's the Mount Kenya, there are the hills of Rwanda. I talked about that, all of that being East Africa, Uganda, the Nile River, and so on and so forth. But anyway, very prophetic. And because of that, there has been a battle for the soul of Kenya, for, for the soul of Kenya, for Kenya, the land massive one and it's been going on for centuries the battle is so has been so intense that you've seen the beast over the years try making um kenya their headquarters right we know even of queen elizabeth being in kenya just um, before she was um, crowned queen, the first country I think that King Charles went after he became king was Kenya. The the William and Kate got engaged. Africa. You 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 have to begin to ask yourself what's the fascination? Do they know something that we don't? But anyway, I say all of that to say that there's been a battle, a warfare. And part of that battle is, um, you know, like I said, um, 
the the warfare we've seen and the bloodshed we've seen the bloodshed <sighs> In 2019, the last big incident we saw, I think with a plane crash, the Ethiopian Airlines plane crash, I think majority of the of the passengers were um, were Kenyans, were Kenyans. So that just lets you know that there's been a war, there's been a battle. 2017. God uh, sent me to Kenya and he's been sending prophets to Kenya over the years because the end time revival, the reset, you know, his, his story began in Africa, in East Africa in particular, like I said, and his story will end there, right? And the enemy knows that. The enemy knows that. And so... God has been sending prophets to Kenya to call them to repentance, to get an alignment with what he wants to do and so on and so forth. And I believe that I was the last of the series of prophets that God had been sending to the nation. He sent me in 2017 was when I was on a hundred day fast and had this immense burden for Kenya. Oh my God, I've never been through anything like that. I was praying my heart out for Kenya. That's when he gave me certain prophetic words and things like that. I followed up a couple of years. I went back to back to back. I tried to gather intercessors and things like that to pray for the land and repent and go to certain portals and things like that. My last attempt to do that in Kenya was unfortunately met with a lot of rejection and maltreatment. Um, yes. And you see, one of the things that um, the scripture says is that when God was sending the apostles to, to, to the, out, right? He said, when you get to a city and they don't receive you, dust your feet. And that will be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah than that city on the day of judgment. And so that was what happened. After that incident, many of, some of them have repented and asked me for forgiveness and I have forgiven them. I, I don't even, I didn't even have anything against them because that's part of the job. It comes with the job. <laughs> it's part of the job description. You get dis persecuted, you get misunderstood. Many prophets were stoned and beheaded and things like that. It's part of the job. So I wasn't even upset. But you see, just sometimes it's not the prophet that's upset. It's God that's upset because that's his messenger. And the way you treat his messenger, as far as he's concerned, is the way you're treating him, right? So anyway, after that incident, I don't know, the burden I had for Kenya just lifted. It was as if God was done. That was it. He was done. But And around that same time, okay, so the burden lifted and I just didn't have any burden at all. None. I don't think since that time, this is probably my first message to Kenya again as a nation. So, but around that same time of 2017, 18, and all that, when I, 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 I had visited, God gave me a word for the current president of Kenya. Some of you can remember. Some of you can remember. I kept asking that um, his team or his wife's team to reach out to me. Because the word that God gave me at the time, he, at that time he was just the vice president. He hadn't, I mean, he hadn't even indicated that he was going to run for presidency. An election had just ended, right? So it wasn't even around the election period, right? But God told me then that he would be the next president and that he had a choice to be a David or a Saul and some other things that I don't want to disclose publicly, he said to me. So he said I should go and deliver this message to him because he would be the next president of Kenya. I knew that already. And like I said, I kept requesting, but I, I, they didn't reach out to me. And 
I kept it moving. And so, like I said, then after that, the burden lifted, the burden lifted. And then now let's come to the message. And I just started watching things unfold, things unfold. And now Kenya has officially, hashtag officially, the word officially, been given over, been sold over, been mortgaged, been given over to the beast. I'm very emotional. And just bear with me. Bear with me, like I said. Just bear with me. <sighs> it's, been, it's been given over. It's been given over. And so, now Kenya has officially, hashtag the word officially, the headquarters of the beast. And I will tell you the two incidences that happened to indicate that. The UN officially moved the headquarters from New York to Kenya. <laughs> I knew it was already the headquarters, but I think there was still hope. The adults signed the oath. The adults signed it away. At the time when God was speaking to me and sending me there, the adults signed it away. But I already had seen a lot of interest. Actually, one of my followers that I was sharing with at one time, she went for a meeting at The Hague. And she said, you're right. She said she wondered why every other participant was Kenya, 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 Kenya. But now it's official. They've done it legally in oath and signed and given Kenya away to the beast. And that's why the headquarters is there. The second thing that has happened recently to indicate that they've given it over. That was done politically by the political elite, right? The spiritual elite also covenanted that the Christ they will follow is the false Christ of the word of faith movement and the Luciferian Christ, a.k.a the ecumenical Christ, AKA the Antichrist. By bringing, by inviting, uh, bringing Benny Hinn, who is the face of the false gospel of this generation's word of faith. By bringing him in to come and hold a crusade or revival or whatever they called it. It was a spiritual thing. They were, that was the mark sign of their allegiance. Some people said, oh, Benny Hinn is repented. Really? Repented? Repented of what? He's repented of the false gospel he's been preaching all these years. His fake miracles, the hypnotism and all those things. He's repented. He's renounced it. He's burnt his books. He's withdrawn them. He's repented. He's repented, but he's still on, on um, what do they call that TV show that he does with Oyaki Lome every, other, every month or whatever they do. He's, he's repented, right? Come on. Come on. What is repentance? What is repentance? Repentance is not just coming out one day and give one video and say, oh, you, you know, you won't be collecting money again. And, other, and then the next minute you come, they collect it. That's remorse. That's not repentance. So they brought him in. <sighs> and so the deal has been done. Now, this is the prophetic warning. This is the warning. If you go into scriptures, in, you see that oaths are sealed with blood. And with meals. The oaths are sealed with blood. And the Lord said that... Um, a massive event is coming to Kenya that would shed a lot of blood and will make 2019 and all those riots and things you saw in 2017 and all your, it will make it look like a joke. What's coming? 
The scripture he gave me was so interesting. Matthew chapter 2, verse 18. And I read, A voice was heard in Ramah, lamentation, weeping, and great mourning. Rachel, weeping for her children, refusing to be comforted because they are no more. <laughs> And when he gave me that word, I'm like, oh, very interesting. The first lady, the mama of the nation, her name happens to be Rachel. So I'm like, is God talking figuratively? And is God, or is he talking, you know, that literally? Or is it both? I don't know. But there's coming. It's major, major. And it will happen before Kanye comes. Kanye as well is coming. Isn't that interesting? Those celebrities, the open portals and all of that. But a major ritual is coming for, to the land. Major one. And um, the Lord said that judgment will begin as well. On the political elite who have sold the land, the land that is covenanted, that belongs to his son because Jesus is the governor amongst the nations. He's the one that ruleth up in the affairs of men and the government shall be upon his shoulders. Hallelujah. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace and of the increase of his government and of his peace. There shall be no end. Amos chapter 3, I believe 1 to 3 is what tells us that there will be judgment for those who divide the land and, and, and give away the land that God has covenanted. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. The audacity to give away that land to the beast, to pave the way for the ecumenical Christ, the Antichrist, the son of petition, the son of peace. That's what UN does. They're the one paving the way. That's what they're going to do. That's their job. One world government. So you want it to be headquarters in Kenya and God's land. So he said, number two, there'll be judgment on those political elite and those bloodlines who have done this. They've been doing it for years, but like I said, it's now official. He's bringing judgment. He's also bringing judgment on the spiritual elite in Kenya. The churches. Yeah. Some of your so-called leaders there. They are all part of the same word of faith, Ecumenica, Jesus. They want to be like their counterparts in Nigeria and America. You know, but he'll bring judgment. Because, because they are part of it too. The political, the elite, the business, they're all in the same, same bed. They're all together. It's the same altars. That's why some of the politicians like you find in other nations like Nigeria are in their churches. That's why they give them money to be able to build their big cathedrals and, and things like that. It's the same. But he said he's bringing judgment. I see a major leader, spiritual leader. God is bringing judgment. I said in my word when I released it for the nations that these are the days of vengeance. That the things written may be fulfilled. This global kingdom reset is from pulpit to pews, politician to people. God is shaking things up to reset us and bring us back to the heart of worship. Those of us who would have ears to hear. Praise God. And um, as I close, one of some of the things I saw, and I don't know how the Pacific Ocean is connected to Kenya because uh, my geography is not good. I did a bit of research and I say Pacific Ocean. But anyway, one of the, what I saw as part of the judgment is water, like a tsunami, drowning, hurricane kind of thing. And I saw an incidence of one of these people's children drowning like in a swimming pool. Part of it, we'll see that. Now, are there any prophetic instructions and um, 
that God is giving for Kenya and Kenyans. At this point with the political elite and you know the president, there's no point, it's too late. He's made his decision. So I have no word for him any longer. The message is irrelevant at this point. However, there might be a few remnants in Kenya who puts aside their, their quest for power, their tribalism, who will put aside this um, word of faith, gospel, bless me, kind of, you know, Jesus that they're following, and will go to the presence of God and cry out for mercy. That God in his righteous judgment should have mercy. That he would temper judgment with mercy. Because what I saw, like that scripture, Matthew 2, 18, weeping, it's not good, massive. Worse, like I said, 2019, 2017, whatever you've had in your history is the joke with what's coming. That's all I can say and have as prophetic instruction. And repentance is really not, um, you know, like I said, remorse, just calling a solemn and sorry, Father, forgive us, forgive us, we repent. No, it is a U turn. That means you come back to the heart of worship, you start looking into the word and following the real Christ. And your behavior and your character and everything lines up. You bring forth fruit, meat for repentance. There's no revival without repentance. We can't talk about that one without the other. The rain comes after the altar that was desecrated has been repaired. So that's all I have by way of prophetic instruction. Because, you know, God reveals to redeem. God will still show mercy. That's how merciful God is. If, if, there, if people do repent. But as far as the call of God on Kenya, you know, being the springboard of revival, forget it. God's done. He's done. He's done. He's giving it to your neighbor. And I won't tell you who and what and all of that. When, when God was done with Saul, he was done. He told the prophet. And that's why I didn't have any burden any longer for Kenya per se. He said, he told the Samuel, the prophet said, I'm done. I'm done with Saul. I've given it, I'm now giving it to someone better than him. So forget this idea of you being the springboard of revival. Maybe a remnant can come and pray and intercede and God can use individuals in Kenya. I believe so. I believe so. But in terms of a global thing, mm -mm. Mm -mm. it's sad. It's sad because Kenya's elite have made their decision. And God has tried and sent prophet after prophet after prophet. That, but you didn't listen. I'm a messenger, people of God. And we say, Father, in your wrath and in your righteous judgment, have mercy. We cover ourselves in the blood of Jesus. I cover everyone under the sound of my voice and the families they represent and their communities in the blood of Jesus. Have mercy upon us, Father. And really change our hearts and bring us back to the heart of worship. Again, you find more about me at royalproclamations.com. Shalom.